Alrighty guys, so as you just saw, we got the fuel cell mounted. We just made a little frame that uh, goes across from mounting tab to mounting tab and it has a bar going from there under on each side to the back. Comes back here and it L shapes, I don't know what to call it, it L's off to the frame on either side. As you can see, we've got to offset to the driver's side uh, a lot so that we have clearance on these down bars. Um, I didn't really love the idea, but it'll work. And we do have clearance between the sump and the pumpkin, which is really good. So that's kind of all I was worried about was the suspension coming up and the axle hitting the bottom of the tank and being able to build a floor around this. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty simple little setup. We got the fuel cell mounted and now we are on to other things. So I don't know what more I'm going to get done tonight. Uh, it is pretty late, but I might get some more done tonight or we'll see you tomorrow. So I don't know. Alrighty guys, so it is the next day. As you saw, we got our fuel cell mounted. I'm super excited about that. But before I continue on, I have to say a huge, huge thank you to my amazing wife, Emma. As you can see, she cleaned the shop. Um, we still have some floor dry right there that I need to sweep up but she cleaned and organized the shop um, and like, oh, such a huge weight off my shoulders. I let it get way too dirty and it's just been stressful and I suck at organizing and cleaning. So I've been putting it off and she came out today and did just an incredible job. So thank you so much. Love you, Emma. But all right, so we are going to pull the engine and trans out of the car for multiple reasons. It's really frustrating. I don't want to, but we're going to. We're gonna pull the engine and trans out of the car one, to see if we can pull it out with the transfer case, how the floor and motor mounts are currently set up, um, just kind of as a proof because I want to be able to redesign it and fix it if I can't because the last thing I want to do is to build it out to where it's not serviceable. So we're going to pull it out to make sure we can pull it out. Um, we are going to weld up those motor mounts that I made. We're going to plate them together, so that'll be really good. And then we are going to be able to have more room to weld underneath all the floor structure um, and the most important thing is we are going to clean the frame. We're going to, we're going to clean the frame. I'll show you how, I'm not sure if we'll do it in this video. We're going to get all the gunk and junk out of the engine bay area and then a lot of the rust off and get it prepped to paint it. So let's uh, jump into pulling this engine and trans out. Alrighty guys, that was absolutely terrible. We had to unbolt the engine, pick the engine up away from the trans. Um, we had to unbolt the bell housing and actually raise the engine up and out and then drop the trans down and out because I was hoping we could lift the trans up, slide it forward and the tail shaft would drop out, but the uh, trans hoops were actually hitting the transmission beforehand. So I can't really make the hoops any bigger. I don't have any room. Um, oh, and my torsion bar cross member, you can see in there is, let me zoom in on that a little bit. My torsion bar cross member is hard mounted. It's welded to the bottom of the frame now. Um, I did that so it would have structural rigidity and it wouldn't bend in the middle because I had to notch it right there. That is not gonna work. So. I'm going to decide what to do, but I think I might end up cutting the welds on the torsion bar cross member and then drilling holes in the frame. In fact, I'll probably actually drill the holes before I cut the welds. Um, I'm probably going to drill some holes through the torsion bar cross member, through the frame, and uh, maybe drill some holes in the side of the frame so that I can get down in there and nut and bolt the torsion bar cross member to the bottom of the frame. I didn't really want to do it that way, but that uh, kind of seems like the only way that's going to work. So we'll probably end up doing that. It really doesn't have much downward force as much as bending force in the middle. So it should be fine nut and bolted. Um, 
a little bit frustrating, but you know, what can you do? So now we gotta pull the fuel cell, which will only take like a minute. And then uh, I am going to clean up and plate these uh, motor mounts while the mounts are still in there, kinda. Um, that way I don't squeeze these too tight or too far apart and uh, we can still have some room. So these mounts are not crazy tight, but tight enough. So yeah, we're going to clean up and just weld some straps on either side to box that in. And then we're going to jump on uh, to the rest of it. Alrighty guys, as you saw, we got the bug chassis rolled out and uh, we picked up a central pneumatic 50 pound, says spot blaster there, says portable abrasive blaster. Um, we got 50 pounds of media, a couple buckets to put it in so that the bag doesn't rip and spill everywhere, some goggles and whatnot, and we are about to uh, test out our little media blaster kit and see how long it takes and see if we can get the frame cleaned up. I'm pretty stinking excited. Alrighty guys, so it is a couple days later, and as you saw, I got the chassis somewhat sandblasted. Um, I got a lot of stuff cleaned up, and mostly just all the loose stuff off. There is still some gunk and grime on that cross member and on the diff and stuff, but I'm not too worried. Um, and then I kind of wire wheeled this side of the chassis to see how it compared, and uh, sandblasted this side. and. The difference isn't too crazy, you can't really see it in this lighting, but uh, the sandblasting was taking way too long and wasn't quite doing what I'd hoped, but it doesn't matter because I'm not trying to make this a show car. It doesn't need to be a perfectly polished frame underneath, it doesn't need to be pretty. I just want to knock the loose chunks off so that I can undercoat it, spray it with a uh, rust reformer, and eh, this isn't the greatest stuff, I got it from Harbor Freight. but. I just want to make the chassis black. Last time I didn't and every time you look under the car it was just flaky rust color and it was horrible because I put so much time into it. It doesn't have to last a long time, it doesn't have to look great. I'm going to take this stuff and I'm just going to spray the entire chassis. Right now, not going to prep it too much, we'll see how long it holds up. If it starts to flake later on, I'll do what I want to do, which I can't afford right now, which is use POR15. That stuff's amazing. 
can't afford it right now. So right now we're just going to spray this stuff on there, get the chassis all one color, and then we are going to uh, be dropping the torsion bar cross member, not necessarily in that order. I need to cut the welds off the torsion bar cross member and drill and uh, put some bolts into the frame so that I can remove the torsion bar cross member. That way I'll be able to get the engine and trans out as one unit. So we're going to modify the torsion bar cross member to make it removable again, and then we're going to paint the chassis and do a bunch of stuff. So let's jump into that. Well, this absolutely sucks. I'm going to have to take it back. Um, uh, that is just a clear liquid. It's supposed to dry, I guess, but it's definitely not a black rust reformer undercoat like the Rust-Oleum and the Pour 15 and all that jazz. So. Whatever, um, I'm going to take that back because that is not what it looks like at all. You'd assume it paints it black considering it's black on that side and whatever. So, um, we are going to put my new flywheel on the engine, uh, put the torque converter in, made it to the transmission over there, and then possibly work on our fuel cell real quick, and then we're going to get that done for tonight. Tomorrow, we're going to paint the frame put the engine and trans back in, uh, put the fuel cell back in, and then uh, hopefully soon we'll be setting the body on and getting a lot of stuff done. So, I can't paint the frame tonight, which really sucks because I was banking on that. But it's okay. Let's, uh, let's get this flywheel put on. Alrighty guys, so I got some Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer. This stuff is supposed to actually be black and not clear like the other junk. So we're going to paint this whole frame. It's not gonna be a great job and it's not gonna be perfect. I really don't care. I just want to cover everything, make it all one color. Control arms are kind of whatever because we'll be replacing them at some point. They're pretty gross. Um, but I'm just gonna literally auction paint job this whole thing from the cage down, the whole chassis. Um, and anything that I end up needing to weld onto or change whatever, I'll just grind through this stuff, weld it, and then repaint it. But right now, we're just going to go through, get the whole thing black, and so that we can get the engine and trans back in, and then we can get the body set on and go from there. I'm super stoked. Alrighty guys, so we got the bug in the shop. I wasn't able to record it because we had to move kind of quick. We got it in the shop, covered in snow, and I've already brushed it off once. Um, it is snowing, you can't really see it, but it's snowing like crazy out there. Um, so I am going to brush the snow off of it, and then uh, raise it up on the lift and squeegee the snow out, and then I'm going to pull the chassis in underneath it because the chassis is outside getting snowed on right now. So I'm just going to do what I can to clean it up and minimize the water that's going to be falling on me, but no matter what I do, I'm going to get water everywhere. So yeah, I'm super excited. I had some buddies uh, help me real quick. Just a couple of them grabbed the back fenders. I stood in the engine bay and grabbed each strut tower with my hands and we carried it in. It was 
pretty stinking heavy. I'm really surprised how much weight is in it, but we got it. Alrighty, so as you guys saw, we got the body set back on the chassis. I took the torsion keys out and lowered it down to where the tire was touching the wheel well, just to kind of make sure that we've got the wheels lined up in the wheel well, because it's hard to tell with this much offset hanging out. Um, and also, the wheel wells aren't round. They go up and then over, and uh, these tires stick out way too far, so they wouldn't be able to turn without gap like this. The other wheels that we're putting on the front should be able to clear pretty good, but uh, it doesn't look like it. It's hard to tell when it's up like that, but it is centered. It looks like it's further back, but it's not. It's actually centered in the wheel well, and when you lower it down a little bit, it looks perfect. So, just making sure we got the wheel well centered on the front. The rear, like I said before, we're moving the axle, so uh, the rear doesn't matter, but it is lined up on the chassis, squared. Um, wheel wells are lined up. We're going to do body mounts up front, obviously. Um, I need to cut out this bit of metal and this bit of metal. But, and clean up all this wiring, get it all out, and I'm going to pull the hood hinges off and stuff, you'll see later. But, we officially have the body back on the car. I don't know if it's going to stay on, I don't know if we'll pull it off. I'm going to try and do everything I can to not have to remove it again, um, and then hopefully uh, we can just leave the body on and make some big progress, but it's really good to see the body back on I do feel like we're making a big progress. So in here in here I pulled the door handles off because they stuck out and they were hitting directly into these down bars So door handles off on the passenger side also on the driver's side fuel cell is set in and uh, last time I had a fuel door hatch above the fuel cell I could open it and reach down and grab that fuel cap right there and I had to bring the fuel filler hose from the gas pump in, reach between the seats and fill it up. I don't want to do that again at all. We're going to have two seats in here with harnesses. We got a bunch of bars. It's just not doable. So I am hopefully, I put the fuel cell in to mock up and look, but hopefully I can put a fuel filler neck on it and run it to right here. And so all I'll have to do is roll up to the gas station open up the trunk and hopefully it'll sit right here I'll be able to just reach in unscrew it pull the cap off stick the fuel hose in like that not have to crouch down not have to do anything and then we'll be able to have the fuel system completely sealed off from the cab like it needs to be so super excited about that everything looks really good obviously I'm gonna be connecting these uh, heater channels to the frame with sheet metal and I build body mounts underneath and everything but yeah so Cage is all in, looks amazing in the car. The fitment is super tight and nice. And I am just freaking excited, guys. We got a trans tunnel in here, a full cage. Um, Alrighty, guys, so it is dark and cold. My hair is all messed up, but we got the engine and trans in the bug, as you can see. Um, I do still need to take the trans jack out from underneath and stuff. I gotta go inside, so I won't be able to lower it down just yet because I still have to put the torsion bar cross member um, back in, and then we'll be able to set it down for the first time with the body on it and the drivetrain in under its own front suspension. So, super excited. We're making super big progress. It feels really freaking good to see this in here again. Um, the engine is set back, uh, the turbo right here, used to sit right here. You can see where I had to uh, bend it in slightly because the turbo is rubbing on it. So the engine set back, which actually gave me more room for my turbo and uh, it'll give me more hood clearance, which is really cool. So I was able to get the engine and trans a little bit further back this time. So that's pretty, uh, that's good news. It's a, it's a good thing. So 
Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm super stoked. We made a lot of progress and we're gonna be making a ton more very soon. So don't forget to stay hungry, stay humble, stay motivated. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, subscribing, all of that. We'll see you next time. Bye.